dude. It's important. What are you doing? What's the Power. banger? It's a fireplace. I don't know. You're in a new environment. New house, finally. I'm not moving for the foreseeable future, which is really cool. And that's the intro. Got him. Well, hurry up and get it on. No, I, I'm working on it. All right. Wait, wait. We could do a second intro. I mean, we can say that's the intro as many times as we need custom. to. I have to have nitro. Eat shit. This to word. do a custom one. Yeah, it's kind of doo-doo. Oh my god. That's why I got this nice Christmas. Fire. It's very toasty nah, over I'm, here. I'm over it. I'm over it. You got a lamp. I love lamp. Welcome to a very impromptu esque. The Keds. Um, Which may not even be an episode. This may not even air. be an episode. We'll this, never know. this will maybe be the secret files. We, we have a bunch of content here, but our production crew is not. So instead, we decided to take it upon ourselves to do a little bit of the deep dive into who we are. Beartel and Soulpan joining you for a little bit of a, a little bit of a personal one. A little, a little treat, baby. Put this on the Kickstarter or the GoFundMe or the Patreon. Something. Put it behind a, a paywall. Fans, no? My yeah. gaming only fans. Well, for those that don't know, I'm Jared Baratel Gasiglione. I have been, I would say, semi-professional shoutcaster for about three years now, if not a little bit more. A big old chunk of change of time. And uh, I've done collegiate. I've done amateur. I've done local. Um, I've done everything but like just main stage professional casting. And of course, that's always a thought, something you can... Try to look forward to, but it's, it's interesting, you know, people think, and it's the bane of, I guess, every shoutcaster out there that really does put, uh, you know, the extra 110% in there that everyone thinks it's so easy. It's not though. It's not an easy thing to do to be a good shoutcaster. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but Soulpan, Soulpan has a little bit more of a decorated, uh, career than I have, all things considered. Should I give like the the full like what I give in an interview? The full the, the full, full pitch. Thing? Yeah. Okay. What? Okay. Where? Where do you come from? What? What? What do you have to offer the job? What bring? What do you bring to the table? So I started just I just play a lot of video games. That's all I do. Um, oh, perfect. I click buttons. And that's it. <laughs> uh, when I was in, <laughs> that's all. When I was in high school, um, I uh, used to like get in trouble for like playing too many video games. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. kind of. I think everyone did. But like. I got like my computer and laptop taken away from me multiple times. Nice. So like I would like hide my laptop like and I would play in bed laying down on my stomach playing League of Legends with no mouse pad on my bed. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I was like probably legitimately addicted. Um, but like I, I love playing the game. Got picked up by like my high school, like two people in my high school like wanted to play in tournaments and stuff. Mm -hmm. Played in the Boise Land, which is how I met Adam X on the X. Yeah. Um. A few tournaments that he ended up running with that same team. Um, we always lost to the Boise State's official team. Um, but I really liked doing that in high school. So then I, I leave Boise. I go to college at University of Idaho. And there's no, and then there's like this amazing League of Legends club. Um, if you're in uh, Idaho or mm -hmm. near Idaho and want to go to college at University of Idaho, um, check out the League of Legends club. It's like massive. They have uh, giant land tournaments and stuff. And so I played in those for a little while. Um, lost to Wazoo constantly. WSC would always come over to our to our tournaments and kick our butt. <laughs> it's really frustrating. Yeah. Um, got benched from that from the U of I team a few times, um, and then I ended up actually leaving University of Idaho, coming back to Boise, um, and then I come to Boise State and I'm like, wow, that club was awesome. I bet Boise State also has a really cool club. And I like I'm looking around, and the person who ran the club the year before was leaving the school yeah the administrator like the student administrator for the club had that's the faculty person who like administrates to the students had died oh shoot and there was like no one who was like stepping up to take over the club and make sure it was still a club yeah and so i was like well i don't want this to die um but if you didn't know me at the time i was like a massive introvert and i mm. didn't like talking to people but i was like i want to play league of legends so i uh stepped in and became club president yeah got a faculty advisor and then i was like okay this is cool um and then like a few weeks later started hearing rumors about like a varsity esports program uh that was going to be built at the school and then that led to me going to talk to doc haskell who's now the director at boise state university 
Oh, um, bastard in like, esports as well of the year. <laughs> oh yeah, don't yeah. forget. And he coach won. of the year, coach twenty twenty one. Yeah, yeah. Decorated man at this. Very point. decorated. Yeah. Um, I had like a long. I had like a few long conversations with Doc, and then it turned into like, okay, well, let's hold student elections for this club at this giant meeting where we're going to talk about esports. I show up, and I'm like. No one had applied through like the online thing I had set up to be mm-hmm. club president. I get there, I'm like, is there anyone who like wants to run against me? And nobody, no. <laughs> nobody raised their hand. So my choices were either let the club disband or be club president. I was like, I guess I'm club president. Okay. <laughs> um, and so that's why I defaulted into being a leader. Um, there was a, the, I'm getting the off topic here, but there's like a, I think a line in community during mm-hmm. like one of the paintball episodes mm-hmm. where, um, there's it's something along the lines of like I don't pursue leadership. I re- re- what's what I'm looking for? Reluctantly accept it when it's thrust upon me, and that's what happened. Everyone knows um, that popping the back of a raft makes it go faster. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I ended up becoming club president. Um, I ended up playing the varsity team there. I ended up helping with the production stuff. I ended up casting with with Adam at Boise State University. So fun connection there. Yeah. Um, and then I graduated Boise State University, and I had varsity experience. I had experience on production. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, "Wow, this was cool. Can I like do what Doc does?" And so I applied to a bunch of universities. I had a few offers, and then ended up taking one at Oklahoma City University. Mm-hmm. Um, worked there for a year and a half, supporting their program and their teams, and then met a whole bunch of people through that. Got you and Adam connected with Click Gaming. Yeah. <gasps> um, Whoa, full circle. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a circle. Whoa. And then um, ended up quitting that job last summer just due to like the the workload. It was just too much, honestly. Um, yeah. And I can talk a little bit about that at some point later too, but just to, in the interest of finishing the story here, moved to Utah for a few months, mm-hmm. just as a temporary place to stay because I just needed to work and stay with family. And then finally have moved back to Boise. Mm-hmm. I do freelance casting. I do, um, I'm a Cloud9 training grounds coach for camps. And then I um, work. I work full time. I'm an IT guy. Friendly neighborhood IT NPC with esports on the side. Oh, yeah, man! Wow, you went way more into it than I thought you were going to. <laughs> now I gotta restart. That's That's now it, I gotta restart. Jeez, I think it all boils down to like seeing things competitively. For me, started not with like the the video games. It wasn't with StarCraft or anything like that, or. Not, not even like WoW Arena, you know those competitive series. Not even, not even CS:GO. For me, competitive gaming started with watching old Magic: The Gathering tournaments, the one v ones, and then like even Tetris one v ones and stuff like that were kind of what inspired me to to be competitive. I'm not like the most physically fit person. Um, if I'm running, you also better start running because I'm running. Warriors are natural perfect- sprinters. Yeah, well, if I'm running from something, it's because it's threatening my life. Um, so you should start running. You don't have to outrun oh, okay. the thing. You just have to outrun me, you know, one of those situations. But, you know, when it comes down to it, I've always tried to be, like, a competitive person. And, you know, it, it took a while, you know, playing well with friends. Not of, none of them were really into, like, PvP. I tried to make, like, some... There's some hidden PvP montages with the cringy like evanescence background music nah, on youtube that i put out there good luck finding them um yeah i've always tried to be like a competitive person and then i found league like around the time right after it officially released in beta where you could buy like the hard disc set at the at walmart or target and i don't know I just kind of really fell in love with the game. It was, it's fresh. It was really, you know, it was developed to be something that you can invest your 18 levels in. Something happens, you flip a coin, you win or lose, and you rinse and repeat. And that kind of thing. A lot of people love it. I mean, it's arguably one of the most popular games in the world. So they're doing something right. And then it started to get more and more competitive. My friends would like, when ranked teams were a thing, we tried to climb the ladder with that. That collective MMR system. When uh, Team Builder came out, we were heavy into that as well. And you know, as everyone's gotten older, 
a lot of people have stopped trying to be competitive and to some extent i've i've done so as well i still try to push whatever boundaries i can sure but more so I, i've looked for an outlet and through also interestingly enough adam on the x <laughs> that guy that that guy um he networked me into stuff it, it ended up being really funny because this was right at the inception of the boise state university uh, program when esports started to become more of a thing you guys were playing in the the second story of the education building not in dr haskell's office but that room with the 24 or some odds the uh zero ventilation 24 yeah, mega, gaming mega PC. hot <laughs> and i was i was there just chilling watching because i was hanging out with adam at the time and they're like we have something for here's the storm do you know this game and i was like i don't know this game i'm like oh yeah i know this game i could talk about like the whole game because i just liked mobas at the time and it ended up being really impressive to dr haskell i was like do you want to do this i'm like sure and we stood in front of that that white board with the one light in complete darkness it was awesome it was like the coolest thing that i had done in a long time and of course watching worlds watching shoutcasting for for x amount of years all the professional esports i had understood what it entailed but i didn't like fully grasp the details of it like the the finer the finer details so for me to chisel that out on my own it's been really cool it's been really fun and since then it's kind of been a, a steady thing that i've done it's been part of what what i do people ask me what i what i work what i do for work how do i make money it's not really about the money but i always say that i have two jobs i have my main job my office job the one that you know pays the bills so i can do the fun stuff and then i have the fun stuff which is casting mm -hmm. um that's blossomed into a, a really steady uh, opportunity at boise state um flexing into many different games many different varsity games there that they continue to grow with and my, might i say as as a detour of my own to, to watch that program blossom into what it is now is just it's jaw-dropping it really is truthfully amazing how a vision with some support and like an almost boundless amount of commitment and energy to the the project and to the to the vision can result in something so cool. Um, if anyone has the opportunity to go to, if we ever do get to go to live events again, <laughs> go to the Boise State Esports Arena right there in downtown Boise. Dude, it is pretty cool. And I think for the most part, it's set at least a, a leaflet of a standard for a lot of different programs. And there's a lot of schools that have taken that idea and went buck wild with it. And they've done some crazy things too, but to, to feel like you, you and me were both part of something that really encouraged and is kind of like the, the, the rhythm, you know, the, the something you can count on the steady beat of the drum for hundreds of other programs is incredible to me, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to think back. It was like, Doc used to quote the statistic all the time of like how many varsity programs there were at the time and then like how many there were like now. Yeah. It was like we joined when there was like I think under 50 schools mm -hmm. that had varsity programs and now it's like hundreds. Yeah. It's it's big, big time. It, ma it makes sense. There's so much talent here. I also think that by shedding the spotlight on younger talent, collegiate talent, it's opened up and started paving ways for amateur talent to start being seen more as well. Like proving grounds didn't used to be a thing when the varsity program started. And now it's like the second best part of league of legends in North America mm -hmm. to see that kind of uprising talent. And then, you know, for me with it being school based and based off the school year, there's semesters, there's peaks and valleys. I had to pursue something. I had to pursue more started doing amateur stuff in in the summer did the the cut did cup did uprising uh for league of legends as well met some really cool people you did um, challengers uprising mm -hmm. i did both I had, cup. I had no idea yeah I, awesome. did, I only did it for one summer and then i was oh, like okay. oh god but it was really cool um it was i did that with um oh my gosh what's his name xt elton if you know elton at all oh yeah i know him elton's Elton's great. Uh, he's a uh, same same kind of visionary that Doctor Haskell is, just way younger. So, 
Um, I think he's now an observer for the LCS broadcast, yep. if I'm not mistaken, too. So yeah, he's, good for take, him. he's taken a Moving less up. of a, a ringleader approach and now kind of just been the eyes, which is great. I mean, if that's what he mm -hmm. likes to do. But he he put together a ragtag server, a bunch of different casters, a bunch of different talents. Some, again, there's some really cool people that I've had the pleasure of working with and hope to work with again in the future. But, you know, that really did, I'm sure you're familiar with it, with the whole freelancing thing. It really does kind of, it, it, it strokes a nerve that can't be done in like a routine kind of way. Like, especially for, like, where where you were going through your university uh, with Oklahoma Oklahoma City or Boise State. It's routine. It's guaranteed. You know, you have to you don't have to fight for your food in that sense. Whereas with freelancing, you have to, like, be on your A game. Yeah. And, you know, it takes a lot of work. Because shoutcasting is so young. Esports is just so young in general that there's no playbook. There's no john maddens yet that have kind of stamped their way to this is an example of a great shoutcaster this is a great example of an esports production member this is a great example of you know anything within esports it's too young it's too new to tell no one's really like carved that whole path captain so flowers there's no hall of fame yet because he's still going right and he deserves it he, i'll say that i feel like he's definitely one of the i'd say top three casters in the world for all games um but is that is that where do we end it i mean they say that like esports players you're like your peak is what like 26 27 if that and then it goes downhill from there do we do we attribute that same timeline to casters i don't think so that's actually been like a huge point I think I've heard a little bit more about recently, which is that um, I think that there's like the, the, the divide right now is that the older generation, mm -hmm. as they start to age out, is going to appeal less to the competitive players that are entering the game space. Sure. So think like, look at every um, amateur team right now. Um, it's full of like people who are like 16, 17, like 100 Thieves Next is like all players right. that are too young to play in the LCS. Right. And so when your casters start aging out of that and getting older and older and older in theory they're going to appeal less to the audience coming into the game at a younger age because because people are aging out of the game and those are being replaced by younger players like just the general player base i'm even talking pro at this point the people watching the lcs mm -hmm. are going to want younger casters in sure. theory until like some kind some kind of stigma changes where like people that are able to play professionally like pico and valorant mm -hmm. um can continue to play at that age i don't i'm, I'm like wondering that like if there is an age long one longevity two casters that like has a hard stop i feel like there there should be to some extent but i i do think that things are drastically like it's easier for for an older caster i think to be on a broadcast than it is for a younger or an older player to get on a professional team yeah but I, I think that Dota 2, for example, has like very aged veterans when it comes to their casting, their talent, hosting, the analysts, and otherwise. Sure, they're trying to bring in new faces, but they're these are these are people that are in their thirties, and it's maybe maybe that's just the demographic of the game. But I still feel like, never mind. I'll take it all back. <laughs> playing playing Dota is impossible. Casting Dota is even more so. So. To, to say that there's an age limit, no. It's a dedication limit. Mm -hmm. I think That's... that there's, there's an interesting dynamic between this where it's an entertainment industry, right? Esports, regardless of what you may say, is still entertainment-based. Playing the game competitively is for entertainment. Casting, it's going to heighten that entertainment value. What's interesting, though, is not to discredit or to try and stereotype anything, but I do feel like across the board, the older that you get the more likely it is that you have a, a secure and extremely self-motivated work ethic, which, uh, which is literally paramount for a good caster. I think it's also, um, I don't know how it's been for you personally, but uh, this is going to tie back into what I was talking about with Oklahoma City University and that mm -hmm. being the workload of that just being too much for me. Right. Um, at some point, there was just like, at some point in my life when I was like 20 to 22, I was like, Esports is the coolest thing ever. I will 
I will skip meals for esports. I will. <laughs> I am willing to work twenty four hours a day, mm-hmm. seven days a week for esports. I want this so bad more than anything. And now right. it's like as I like got. A, I mean, I'm not that much older. I'm twenty five now. Um, so old. <laughs> and as I got a little older, I was like, wow, I really want to do like other things. Yeah. There's like more stuff I want to do. I want to like, I don't know. For example, uh, I've been. I don't know. I've been going to the gym a lot since um, I left Oklahoma City University. I didn't have time for it when I was there. Show the gains. Um, Show the gains. <laughs> I, there were no, you know, gain posting. Oh, okay. um, I can say that I have gained about 25 pounds, um, which Brain for me is a good thing. Forehead. It's been good. That's um, good. I ended up being like a record low weight at Oklahoma City University because I was just overworking myself. Great. Um, and I've like gained all that back and some, which has been really really awesome and really really rewarding as an experience so like it's just like there's other things i want to do i want to spend some time at the gym i want to i just want, i don't want to grind league for 12 hours a day anymore is that the, is <laughs> that like, like the that. thing though right because that does that dictate the pace for what's successful to some extent kind of like is it only the young the hungry that can pursue this before they burn out because you will eventually burn out especially if you're doing that amount of drastically unhealthy things to your body although Again, we've talked about in previous episodes before how professional teams have started staffing to prevent that in, mm-hmm. in preparation. And that's to increase the longevity of their players, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I think it is still possible for you to inevitably burn out. Yeah. Um, there, I think everyone has a limit. I'm amazed that Doc Haskell is still going at Boise State. I think there are multiple times where, like, it looked like he was going to stop. Yeah. Because it was, just, it was just getting to be too much. Sometimes he's I forget still there. what the he's... top of his head looks like because he wears so many different hats. <laughs> but it is what it is. And that's the thing. I mean, he's not to throw any shade to Dr. Haskell, but he's clearly older than us. Like, maybe sometime, some, sometimes over. But he still continues to do it. He may seem a little... Everyone's got their moments. Dr. Haskell just, you know, because he's the one in the ring, he's the ring leader. His His moments are more notable <laughs> you have everyone He's in the, looking, he, has, he has a spotlight on him is that what you're trying to say exactly everyone's yeah. looking up to him so the times that he has a, a, a situation or something happens it's everyone notices it i Where, can i I'm, I'm gonna tell a funny story yeah <laughs> really don't, quick don't get blasted though no no this won't get me this won't get me in trouble or anything um at least i hope not but there was a uh day when like Tespa was still a thing mm-hmm. um and our overwatch team was like supposed to play like in the playoffs um doc asked for everyone to show up an hour before okay didn't like specify a time exactly but he specifically like an hour before the matches started mm-hmm. and so on the email that Tespa sent out they said a time that was wrong if you oh, check their God. website that was the correct time okay so i'm dumb i showed up to the arena basically essentially two hours early mm-hmm. um and no one else was there. And, I was, and then that's like, I looked into it. I was like, oh, okay. The time zones are wrong. Tess, but acknowledge that they're wrong. This is the right time. I'll just sit here and warm up the entire time. Right. And like, Doc gets into the room um, at like 15 minutes to the hour. And still no, one, no one's there. And he's like mad. He's fuming. He's like, where are the rest of the players? Right. We're going to forfeit this game. Where are the rest of the players? He's like mad. Mm-hmm. And I think like at that point, like two other people get there because they were just eating at uh, five guys, which is like across the road. <laughs> and he's like mad at them, like really, really mad uh, for showing up late. Yeah. And I won't mention who the players were, but they um, like were talking like after the match, like they almost just dropped the team <laughs> because really? they did like, because they didn't. Yeah. They, they were like mad, mad because like they didn't feel like they deserved to be getting yelled at. And then, like, Doc Haskell, at the end of it all, like, realized what had happened. And we finally got it through to him, like, no, the match starts in, like, an hour. We're, we're good. We're on time. Right. He, like, apologized so much. He felt so bad. Well, good. Um, and, like, gave us pizza. Oh, <laughs> it, was yeah. like, it was It was a really funny, uh, really funny experience. I, I just was busy messaging someone in a, that I've actually come to find out has an interesting relation to you. And they've asked me to say a word, but I can't remember what that word is. So I just texted them. Bushwookie? No, it's not Bushwookie. No? It's, it's something more obscure than that. Um, more obscure than you, Bushwookie? If I'm going to say the first names, not to out anybody, but do you remember okay. Nick and Danny from high school? 
from high school. Yeah, Nick, you stayed at Nick's cousin's before you moved to where you're at now, I think. Nick's co- Oh, you know, you know Nick. Oh don't my say, god, don't say the last name. You know Nack Attack? I know Nack Attack and Confusion, yeah. What? Yeah, they asked me to say a word, but I can't remember what the word is. It's something that like they said would trigger you, and I'm really trying to figure it out. <laughs> I can't believe it. That's a really that's a really odd connection, isn't it? Yeah, because I remember when we first started doing this show, um, I was just talking to them. I was like, "Yeah, I'm doing it with my my friend Paul, Soul Pan." They're like, "Soul Pan, you know Soul Pan?" Yeah, can... I'm like, "Yeah, I know Soul Pan." Was it Beancraft? No. <laughs> what is what is what well, what is Beancraft? <laughs> okay, I'm curious while you're now. picking this out, um, that was a. A Minecraft server my older brother ran in high school. Okay. That I met a lot of people, including Confusion mm-hmm. and Knack Attack through, and Knack Attack's younger brother, Afi, okay. who was the vice president of the club at Boise State University with me. Really? Yeah. Okay. And I'm also really good friends with him now to this day. We've like been roommates for a few years. Um and he's Good. currently pestering me to hop on a call with him and play some right games. <laughs> <laughs> this is a less structured episode, okay? We're yeah, just, we're just we're hanging free out. On it. This is what happens when production gives us the reins. They it's didn't. We took them. I don't know where <laughs> they are. Forced. Watch them. I don't know how this would make any sense. Because even if it meant, even if we agreed upon six p.m. their time, they would still be extremely late. And, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. I don't know. Just confusion. Things happen. You never know. Yeah. I'm, I hope they're I okay. Hope everyone, yeah, I was about to say, I hope everyone's okay. And this is good. Because, again, yeah, for, a chance for, to do like this. for us to come out, of, uh, come out of the woodwork and just do this show, give all these, like, arbitrary opinions without any background, and not saying that our backgrounds prove that anything that we have as an opinion is legitimate, that's a little jarring, I guess. Also, check this out. Oh my god! <laughs> the headset, the headset in this green screen registers as part of my head, and it you got a really long face. It doesn't recognize <laughs> Wait, keep going. the gap keep in going. between my headset as my actual. You have to keep going. How far does it go? Oh, it goes the whole. It goes all the way. It's a long head. <laughs> I also have very long hair now. Oh, very nice. How was your? Yeah. How are your holidays? Holidays? Yeah. We're pretty it's much the non-existent. New year. Um. Has your year started? I heard some people have had some catastrophic starts this year. My year like started fine. The problem was the holiday break. So the reason I missed the last click gaming episode, yeah, with where Adam subbed in for me, um, was because I was moving my girlfriend from Oklahoma to here. Oh damn. Um. So and I was also attending her graduation. So I, what I ended up doing was I flew out on the Thursday before her graduation, which was yeah. the 9th of December. Mm-hmm. Graduation was that Friday, and then like I stayed with her for the next week to help pack Mm -hmm. everything, and then we drove down from Oklahoma to here the eighteenth through, or sorry, the seventeenth through the nineteenth. Okay, and then arrived in Boise on the nineteenth of December. Yeah. Oh come on, guys! I drove about twenty-two hours in three days. Um. And really, honestly, like everything went fine except for the first two hours of the of the thing. We almost screwed up horribly. Oh, so um, she'd have a lot of stuff that she like wanted to keep, so she would just kind of packed everything that she wanted in her car. Yeah, to take and then we were like like buying new furniture because everything she had was like kind of crap. Sure, and same, I, I did. I've done the same thing. <laughs> it's just right. easier to buy new stuff than yeah. You're just like, your don't stuff. see ya. Yeah, this table sucks. This chair sucks. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, first two hours into the road trip. Um, we stop at a gas station mm-hmm. we're to see if like we get her cat to go to the bathroom and eat some food and drink some water because he'd kind of been not super happy with the fact that he's in a car. Um, I go to the trunk to start like grabbing some stuff as we're filling up the car and I hand her the keys. And she's setting up the litter box. Right. Um, Puts the keys on the driver's seat, puts the litter box on top of that, mm-hmm. and then like just fills it up, closes the door, and then realizes the door is locked. So I'm uh, about to shut the trunk, and she was running back. She's like, "No, don't, don't shut that." 
And so Yikes. we locked ourselves out of the car and had to go into the trunk to unlock the passenger side door from the inside. Sets Whoa. off the car alarm. Everyone's staring at us. Oh. <laughs> Finally end up finding the keys and the poor cat was just freaking out the whole time. I felt so bad for him. Yikes. Yeah. Yikes. So fun, fun road trip times. But other than that, it was a nice and easy move for here now. I won't move for the foreseeable future, which is cool. And Yeah, 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 yeah. No yeah. more moving. I know. It's great. So apparently it's something that Nick doesn't know, but Danny does. So I'll somehow hmm. maybe he forgot. I don't know. Regardless. I'm glad if you're... it's if it's Danny, he's gonna like say some like really old Minecraft reference that like ties back into Beancraft, I bet. Because like outside of that Minecraft server, I hardly interacted with him. Oh, that's interesting. That's so weird. Small world. Small I... Boise's small. Boise is say, just small. I, Idaho in general is such a small world state. Like if I ever go out in public, every time I'll see someone that I know from who knows how long ago. Yeah, felt that. It's just too small. I mean, Spe into... speaking of getting out, XD. XD. Are you planning on going to the next LAN event for Click Gaming? Click Gaming? Yeah. Um, I haven't heard anything, honestly. I don't. I don't know. There's a part of me that actually, like, I've been considering this over the break that wants mm -hmm. to move more towards the C9TG coaching stuff and away oh. from casting. Right. But I'm still not sure how that's gonna turn out. Oh, how would that? So we'll see. You just get more involved or something, or what? Yeah. Um, they have see. like additional roles that would allow you to take on more hours, right? Within that organization, and so like, that's I'd, cool. Like optimally, I'd like to find myself on one of those roles, but I don't know if I like have the uh, the experience they're looking for necessarily. Oh, well, the lands from the 18th to the 20th, and that's and one. That one's in March, right? That's for yeah. Halo and COD. Yes, yes, I believe. So. I don't know if we're gonna get a LAN. Why? I'd, I hate to be the the pessimistic downer. I think we're hitting a new peak with this new variant, and it's spooky. And I'm not sure if uh, LAN events will be a thing within the next three months. I think it's too soon. I do think that eventually, though, once this is done, because this one has an end and it's herd immunity. So I don't want to get into that at all. <laughs> <'Cause that's... laughs> yeah. Let's not let's not talk as if we're experts on it at all. But I. Right now, I, I'm I'm fearing that the numbers look bad. Yeah, and that's enough for like local events to Everyone's start shutting stuff sick. down again. Yeah, it's, Every, it's e literally everyone rampant. I know got sick. Yeah, actually everyone, everyone I know. I, I like my siblings both had it. Um, my like multiple people like within my friend group in Idaho ended mm -hmm. up getting it, and like they can't get tested, but like they they're like ninety nine percent sure that they have it. Right. I don't know. Literally just, everyone got yeah, sick. No, thing. it's it's a very real thing. There was even some um worry yeah. in the I I think I'm not sure if this is the same land, but there were some um uh, the COD folks from the Oklahoma land we casted mm -hmm. that were talking on Twitter about how they're worried that the event at the casino is gonna get canceled because the big one. um they're like getting calls about like their rooms and stuff and how like they might not have availability or something like that, or like how things might be getting canceled there. So it might just be currently just be panic. Maybe things will be fine in just a little bit, but right now it doesn't look good. It's you know? it's kind of impossible to tell. It, mm -hmm. If these past two years have been a lesson, it's that you can't predict anything. Yeah, yep. Yeah. It also stinks because in March there's also the Boise Land coming back too. And I so desperately want to go and crush we'll it again. That's you guys are semi-professional, so I mean, it makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> oh my god, do we talk about? Yeah, so last at last official land that we had. 2019. 20 yeah, Jesus. 2019. It's a great a great event. We had a huge venue. Uh it was it was jam-packed as much as we could fill. It, it, honestly, the venue was maybe 10 times too big, but regardless, yeah. it was a great venue. It was at the Boise Center if any of you are familiar with it. Um Overwatch was day 3. It was the last day, I believe. Yeah. That sounds right. That uh, is three-day land. Go through the first two days doing our own tournaments. We do, like, some fun stuff. Teams can register for prizes. Uh, we work with, like, Hardware Asylum. Uh, get a lot of goodies in terms of peripherals. Work with Phoenix Fire Games. Get some a bunch of cool prizes that you can win. And I won League of Legends. Don't leave that part out. Yeah, League of Legends already locked and loaded. GG no re. I think you actually kicked my team out. I did think I win? did. I think yeah. I think my, we my, won. my team won. It was it was um, team chromatic sunglasses emoji was our team name. Yeah. Gosh darn it. I I also ate buffalo wild wings like three 
four times that whole weekend because <laughs> it was right there. It's right there. Yeah. Um, day one goes by. League Legends gets handed over to the Soul Pants team. Day two, I think you were just farting around. We did. I really played CS:GO. Yeah, CS:GO and... for fun. Yeah, I, it was our team didn't do super well. They brought me on as like because they lost some guy who yeah. like couldn't make it, and said so like, "Hey, you want to join our team?" I was like, "Sure." And they were already like a four fun team. Yeah. And so we just I I actually didn't do bad. Yeah. I was not not to gloat or anything, but I'm pretty much the best gamer of all. Time. No, I mean like it was it was we, we like went out <laughs> incredibly in the first round. humble it was, it was too. A good time. It was fun though. Yeah. And then day three happens, and for some reason I don't know why because. We don't see a lot of fan base for this game outside uh, of the lands, but everyone comes tooth and nail, swinging and punching when it comes to Overwatch. And that was our mm-hmm. day three event, day long tournament. Of course, it was the final day before wrap up, and it, it goes into full force. You know, we had yeah. two, we had kind of on both sides of the bracket, we had two teams that were just dominating, and they, they were getting heated. Soul Pan had uh, created what would be construed as the dream team, though. Yeah, uh, so he, he, I, pull, he pulled at the some... time. I was graduating from the team at Boise State University. Oh, no, this is, this is in the summer. So I had one more yeah. semester left at Boise State University. I pulled in two on, of my right? old teammates and food. Uh, yeah, salad on and food, who are crazy good DPS players. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was also I pulled in some of the old members from the team that had ended up quitting and leaving the university right. in Blitz six four seven, all uppercase, um, and basilisk yeah basilisk the no, no, sorry the, it, 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 it wasn't basilisk, was it basilisk? That, it was, was, was cbm that was a different one the dirtiest um, freaking lucio player in the world <laughs> yeah it, so it was cbmx who was on the team food mm-hmm. who had left the team saladon who would also left the team um blitz 647 who had left the team and all of our case who had left the team so it was a bunch of retirees basically i brought yeah. in like the retirement home yeah to, to play the tournament and we like we, we guys, crushed it i was gonna say you guys just went through like at least breeze. our side of the bracket yeah yeah. Was the final I mean I remember casting no, I think we actually handed that off to Lisa for casting. Um, as far as I know, we the, the finals were kind of a breeze too. Yeah. And unless we were like trolling around a little bit, but like well, that tournament was pretty free. The the other team on the other side of the tournament that made it to finals, uh they were again fighting one hundred and ten percent. They tried to activate, you know, Goku Ultimate Instinct. They used the <laughs> Sensu beams, they used everything that they tried everything. to called upon yeah. all the energy for the spirit bomb. And they could not do it. They couldn't win. 2-0. And they were or 3-0. Or p- the and they was. were pissed at a friendly, fun land that we've had for the past three days. They were livid. And they went to, I think they went to Con, Constant. Um, but really quick to where we were at. We like, I made sure all my teams that I played on got up at the end of matches, went over and shook hands yeah. with, with everyone else that we, like, that we beat. Because like that's what you're supposed to do. That's it's like just thing, it's like yeah. a common courtesy at land, I think, to like unless get up. that's unless it's COD. Unless it's COD, then you yell and then you shake hands. Yeah. But you're but like we I made sure that we all got up, we would all walk over, we all shook hands, said good game, and be like I'd try and tell the team that I was playing on to like give them like a compliment, give like their players or their team a compliment. Yeah. Um so like we were trying to be like courteous through the entire tournament, but then I'll let you take it. Yeah, these these guys went to Constantine, the the rud the runner of Boise Land. He's like the head honcho, and I I through incessant amount of complaining and whining the tried to make a case for the fact that that match shouldn't have counted because the team that they were playing were semi-professionals <laughs> <laughs> to keep, keep in mind that the most of these players have ever played in is like collegiate which is still like high caliber sure yeah but no one near like, semi-professional these are, my, these are just my friends i just wanted right. to play in a with some friends man yeah and so, they, so like they like begrudgingly took their second place prize like semi-professional players are allowed at a land yeah they're mad about it our team didn't even realize that they were mad about it um until they like posted all over like the the facebook for it so dumb and so like i i like a i did my best to like do like a kind of like a half apology where i like said sorry you guys felt that way yeah like (laughs) what's really apologizing but i was just like that's silly but i felt like i had to say something because it was just like it's a competitive land still i mean yeah i brought i brought my friends there's prizes the on the line. Man. You want to take There's the dubs. Exactly, yeah. My younger brother still uses that Overwatch backpack to this day. Wow. Cool and, guy. Uh... <laughs> you didn't take it with you? No, I, I had too many backpacks. Yo, speaking of cool prizes, the last uh, like party that Boise State put on for, Hall- excuse me, for Halloween, I got this freaking ammo, ammo box for. I was full with a bunch of swag. 
because I won trivia and I don't know nice. how I did that. But good job. There was if you won the Overwatch, which was a three v three, which was impossible. Um, you got a Soldier seventy six leather jacket. Now I'm kicking myself. I could have showed up to that Halloween party. You were I was here. In Boise. Oh, you could have yeah. swept it too. I know. <laughs> That's unfortunate. I know. It's okay. I'll get it next time. It's gone. No, no one claimed it. Oh wait, wait, wait what? It's still there. What? Have you seen the um, NACC rings? Uh yeah, I have. Massive. I'm gonna claim that jacket. By the way, my hair is getting grayer and grayer. That's cool. there's like patches yes. of it. You can't see it on this camera. You should just like... dye it gray. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I have to lose a bet to dye my hair. All right. That's the I, only way it'll happen. I bet you my name's Jared. Oh, I win. Time to dye your hair, dude. I respectfully decline your terms. All right. Can we talk about the Super Bowl? Is that like on? I I won't be able to. You I have talk no about idea. At all? Um, all I will say is that he, can I can I do my uh? We my should tin- still do a. I'm gonna let you finish. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna let you finish. I don't watch football. I don't watch that much football. I like I know the rules mm-hmm. enough to understand like and enjoy spectating it. Um, I've watched a few Boise State games. I've watched the Fiesta Bowl, of course, when it happened so many years ago. People still talk about it to this day. That's the only thing we have to tr- claim. Um, dude. It's so the annoying. Only, a lot of esports players don't watch traditional sports. A lot of esports watchers don't watch traditional sports. Huh. If you are an esports person, you don't like sports, maybe you just don't like football, watch Alabama versus Auburn every single year. I still, if I can watch that game, I will watch it because I think that is like the coolest rivalry in football. Mm. And it's always it's such a highly competitive and highly and in, just emotionally intense match yeah. between the two teams, and it's so fun to watch every single year. It is cool to see like the rise and fall of your emotions in that. Speaking of, I mean, we tentatively have an opportunity to do the same thing come October, November this year. What Both for? San Francisco and New York, dude. Worlds here in North oh. America. Oh yeah, that'll be fun. Are you gonna go? Probably not. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a crew. We're gonna either party bus or party fly. I'm going to one of the two. I'm going to Worlds this year. I'm gonna Respect. be plat too. You're gonna be plat <laughs> when I yeah. I'll be plat by the time I get there to the okay. Worlds. Okay, all right. Easy. I already know who I'm gonna play. Only who? Okay. <laughs> oh, are you ready for this? <laughs> all right, lay it on me. What do you got? <laughs> I'm gonna let you finish, but I think it's time for the rise in power. It's time for Arma Jungle to come. Well, what the heck's going on with my arm? Freaking phantom arm. Arma Jungle, baby, it's time. You're fading away with the horrible take. Oh, don't play Arma Jungle. My, my future is like in jeopardy because I'm saying something <laughs> crazy. <laughs> it's good. It's good. I think, honestly, though, um, I'm going to play like Talon mid, Talon Jungle. And just Talon Jungle games. will get nerfed. Play something if you if you want my advice, my unsolicited advice for solo queue. Play meta resistant things. Like Talon Jungle. Talon's not meta resistant. Talon will get changed because right now his only weakness, which was gated by him staying in mid, has been removed from his kit because he which can is... jungle now. Yeah, isn't that cool? Not cool at all. No. Yeah. You don't want to remove counterplay from a role or from a champion because their role switches. So what they're going to end up having to do what, is either take him out of the jungle. Look at Brand. Look at Brand? What do you mean, look at Brand? He doesn't do anything. Dude, he's not a mid laner anymore. Look at Vigar. Look at Velkaz. They're not mid laners yeah, yeah, anymore. They still have counterplay in their kit. They didn't get better be- by by switching roles. They got debatably worse. You think that Velkaz but, is worse as a support? I mean, like, it's, it's not as fun. Okay, we're going to be from the point. Talon is... He has meaningful counterplay in mid because... You can keep him in lane. You can deny him CS. Yeah. You can deny him farm. Yeah, I, that's true. And you can only he can't really hop over any walls. He can't use that part of his kit unless he's roaming actively. Right, and then you can punish in by being jungle, in jungle. He can invade constantly for free. He can never be caught because of the obscurity of his E. Yeah. It's just like it's just not fair. So like that ability will get reworked this season, or horribly nerfed, or is clearly horribly nerfed. So he will not stay a jungler. Here, in season here, 12. Here's what here's what I need to do. I need to get myself on the cusp of like a really important like not division climb but tier climb between like silver gold, gold platinum 
and then Udyr gets released, and I just insta get carried to my next division. By Udyr? By just playing new Udyr. Rework Udyr? Udyr's good now, dude. Play Udyr now. He's not good. He's great. No, when you when only two of your abilities are useful, you're not a good champion. Your two That's abilities are really good. Consider Aphilios. Aphilios doesn't have a Q. <laughs> exactly, have a Q. he only has two abilities. That doesn't count. His he only has two abilities, and only two of his abilities are good. Okay, if uh, a percentage, if fifty percent of your abilities are only good, then it's bad. The only, the only other thing that's close is, like, Zillion passive. And that's the only thing that's garbage past, like, I don't know, 20 minutes. I can do this. Think. All-Star's good. Anivia's good. Akali's good. Annie's good. Amumu's good. Useless champion who half their kit is useless. Half their kit's useless. Riven's I know good. I can think of someone. I just need to pull up a champion list and well, I'll, I'll, I'll get you some. We're, we're freeform in it. Let's Mumu. go. Amumu's great! Only half of those kits useful though. No, the, his it W, his, his, his W does so much damage, and his E makes it so he can't die to AD. Okay. okay Wait, what, do you, what, you, what do you think gets him the conqueror stacks? <laughs> you can have him. Okay. Ramus. Now Ramus is doo doo. <laughs> Ramus is the least fun champion of the game to play, and I stand no, by that not. opinion. Have you played him with the new ult? Yeah, he's still not fun. You get to be Kawabunga man. He's the most boring champion to play in the game. Let's pull up the He's list. fun every two minutes. That's fair. When you have Predator Ghosts and uh, Heck Chem Tank up, we have everything up, and then you can go fast one time, and then it's over. There's the fun. Would you say are No. Rek'Sai. You don't think and she well, actually, because she has Are you talking, okay, what, what two abilities? Because I personally think that Rek, Rek'Sai, yeah, Rek'Sai W and Rek'Sai ult. Ult. But you can't do an e. the Q is useless. Q is useless. It's an auto reset, and that's it. Your literal goal is to burst people. Same thing with Malphite, to be champion. honest. Yep, that's fifty percent. There you go. We got we got three champions. The Malphite's it's not useful. just Udyr. Skarner. 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 Skarner's just Q bad, bro. Useless. Skarner's just bad. <laughs> Skarner doesn't count. He's got. Okay, we're talking about seventy five percent of their seventy five percent of their kits are are good. Twenty five percent is bad. I look at these other champions, and there's like, maybe Seraphine Q doesn't really do anything. That'd be about it, maybe. Vladimir, not really. Vladimir, no. His attack gets a good. strong, powerful, confident Vladimir will win a game by themselves. I hate that champion. Twisted Fate, stack the deck. What the hell is that about? Stack the deck, baby. That doesn't do. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> I'm excited for the rework. I'm gonna milk it as much as I can. I wish you the best in milking the rework. Oh, are you? How do you feel about the whole neon? Um, what's her name thing? The like new, the, the, the new character. The new character. The one new character for two different games. <laughs> yeah, she really got released in Valorant too. It looks like. Yeah, ne her name is Neon yeah. and Valorant, and she's uh, the kit, the voice actress, the art style is very, the the same. <laughs> Let's yeah. be honest. How do I? F I think I it's cool. I, it, it's hard to tell right now. Um, right. But like, it really does feel like a fairly unique champion in in kit. both sense. Yeah. What what I find cool is, it, someone had attributed this like as a joke to like the MCU effect with like different universes. I think that's cool. I think I mean, if you can justify it and make each character fun to play while still having the identity, I mean, she's still in both games like a hyper electric mega fast Mach one character. I think that's a cool thematic. And as long as you keep that on the nose, it doesn't really matter if there's, you know, little gameplay differences. It's just as long as they're not broken. Yeah, fair. Good job, Riot. You think Octron will be paid, played competitively? I don't know. <laughs> it's like a weird question mark, right? It's too early to tell. Um... The passive's just too good. Here's the thing. I'm gonna let you finish part two. Part two. Part two. So I think Akshan suffers from the same problems that Vayne Top does. Yeah. Where if your jungler has a brain and competitive, they do. Yeah. You're gonna shut that thing down so, so quick. Sure. You can't He's stop not his necessarily passive, super good in an in the ADC role. Mm-hmm. He's not super good in mid because you can't really blind pick him. Yeah. 
So it's like he's his his lane's gonna be top because he's a, he's got like that range top advantage. Right. But then like again, you can you can exploit that. So I don't think we're gonna see him unless his kit is just like or his like numbers are just insanely powerful. It's all about the passive. I'm playing with support. Screw it. <laughs> yeah, dude. He will. He is. He is not. He will not work in support. You do. There's you no way. Senna auction bottom with like fam famish uh, the Senna. You starve the Senna for for stacks. I can't remember that still works. I can't remember if they changed that or not. I mean, you get you get higher percentage of ghoul dropping when someone else kills the the minion. So I don't see why it wouldn't. But Senna shouldn't be a support. Senna's goofy. Senna's a goofball. I want to like structure this, but again, this is just too freeform. We did it though. We're here. Wait, we we got past all. I want. I'm gonna let you finishes. Did I do mine? I think so. Right? You did. The, oh, um... yo, you know how I've been talking another? about critical role. I have nothing on critical role. That's all I've been you. talking about it though. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's about to be time for you to jump in. Minus the fact that you missed the start of campaign three, they're doing an animated series starting the end of this month. You can watch it. Pretty cool. That's kind of cool. That's kind of going to be sick. They're yeah. That's cool that it, their D and D show got so massive that they're getting an animated series. That's yeah, sick. They're cool. I they're hope cool it's successful. People. Wish them the best. Did you know one of the players for this current campaign is the voice of Kane? I did not know. Robbie but it's cool Damon. that they get such cool uh, voice actors for it. Yeah, it's it's even more impressive. Like, if you ever watch Critical Run, you're like, I swear I've heard this voice before. I you bet have. nine times out of ten you actually have. Yeah, because those are like the North American voice actors for some of your favorite games. I mean, Liam O'Brien's the voice of freaking Illidan and Deathwing. If you're a fan of I don't World know Warcraft, that is. Do you know who Deathwing is? I'm sorry, I never got into WoW. <sighs> oh well. Say what, say what it is. Are you excited for Tiny Tina? That's a... The new Borderlands That's a Borderlands game. thing, right? Yeah, well, it's not Borderlands BS. It's, it's the freaking... <laughs> it's a Dungeons & Dragons Borderlands game. Oh, that's right. I did hear about this. Um, yeah. But honestly, no. <laughs> <laughs> You literally are only going to play Lost Ark, huh? Yeah, that's all I'm here for. This is what this year, that and uh, Cart Rider Drift. Those are the two oh, hype gosh. releases for me this year. I'm surprised you're not a crab game main. I actually have played. What is, have you played Skatebird yet? No. Oh, man. That's a game. Have you gotten on the Project Zomboid train? I have gotten on that one. It's, it's decently fun. It's a, ten, uh, it's a 10 year old game. I think it plays a little slow. It's hard. It's, it's, it hasn't felt hard to me yet, but maybe I just haven't played it for long enough. Yeah. Maybe you're just a god gamer, like you were saying. Who knows? <laughs> uh, really yeah, very is. humble. Extremely humble. <laughs> very god humble. gamer. Well, I guess that'll do it for tonight's episode of whatever the heck this was. Can't really call it. It's release. Who it's, knows? It's, it's not, not. We it's had a not, great conversation. It's not click heads. It's into the heads that get clicked. <laughs> Y'all have a great night. <laughs> <laughs>